You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 37. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Hey there, how are you all doing? I hope you are enjoying the summer and going on some fun and romantic dates. But maybe you are also in this situation that I only know too well, where a man is sending you mixed signals. This could happen in early dating when you are still getting to know each other and he's showing you this kind of hot and cold behavior. And if that is the case, then you have to respond by completely leaning back into your feminine energy. Don't start chasing him. Don't even waste your time on ruminating over why he's behaving like that. Just lean back and let someone else get a chance to date you until this guy makes up his mind. You want to listen to episode 2 about chasing and the mini-series on emotional availability, episode 14 to 16, if you want to get some more insight on that scenario. But the mixed signals could also be at a later stage in dating or even after a breakup. And what I have noticed is that many of us tend to respond in a certain way to mixed signals, a way that is not serving us because it only makes us feel more disempowered and stuck. So in this episode, I will focus on what it is we do when someone sends us mixed signals and why it actually makes the suffering worse for ourselves, and how to shift that so that we can take back our power and start moving forward. And I'm going to offer you three shifts that can help you do that. But before I do that, I want to just share with you an image that I think can be useful if you struggle to make the shift into feminine energy and leaning back. So imagine the egg cell. This is one of the biggest, if not the biggest cell of the human body. It just sits there like a queen and waits for the sperm cell who is the fastest, most decisive and with the most initiative and direction to come towards her. We do not consider the egg to be weak or submissive. We consider her to be the queen and the sperm cells, they are the ones who do all the hard work here. And the egg cell does not leave her position to go out and help the weakest sperm cells or the most confused sperm cells move towards her, right? She doesn't push them to go faster. Imagine what would happen if she did that. She would completely mess with nature. Because then she would be stuck with a sperm cell that never even qualified to be the winner. A cell that wasn't vital or healthy enough to do the job itself. And then what would happen to the offspring? It wouldn't be strong or healthy either. And she knows that. She knows that she has to be patient and wait for the natural winner to arrive. In the sense that this is the sperm cell that has the qualities that allows it to move towards her and penetrate the membrane so it can fertilize her. So there you go, ladies. No more sex for that episode, but I thought I wanted to share this image with you. And I think you get my point. If you go chasing a man who doesn't have the intention and the ability to come consistently towards you by himself, you're not going to create a healthy relationship. So you might get the guy on the short term, but you will feel in the end stuck in the wrong relationship on the longer term. We're just going to stop this episode for a moment because I have an important announcement for you. Thursday, the 31st of August, I am hosting a free masterclass for anyone who feels fed up and frustrated with men that are emotionally unavailable. The hot and cold kind of guy. Mr. Mixed Signals. The It's Complicated Man. All men that you can easily end up wasting your precious time and energy on only to get too attached and have your heart broken in the end. And I'm going to help you stop that right now. In this masterclass, I'll walk you through five different types of emotionally unavailable men, different ways it can show up, because it's actually not always that obvious, which is why even smart women like you get caught in it sometimes. 
So I have observed these five different types that I will share with you so you can recognize them. And to make it a bit fun, I've chosen to present them almost like five archetypes of unavailable men. But of course, you need to take that with a grain of salt. It's just for illustrative purposes. And then, once you know how to recognize emotional unavailability, I'll give you five shifts that you can make to stop giving away your power and energy to these men and instead start attracting the real emotionally available men who could be partner potential for you. And part of that is, of course, knowing what to look for, how to spot a good man, the green flags in early dating, and I'll also let you in on those. So, you definitely don't want to miss out on this. It's going to be Thursday the 31st at 8 p.m. Central European Time. So that corresponds to 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And you can see all the details in the registration form. And if you can't join, then sign up anyway because you'll receive a replay afterwards. So you can sign up by clicking the link in the show notes. And if you're listening from a platform with no show notes, you want to head over to my Instagram instead. And that is at Lærke the Love Coach, L-A-E-R-K-E, the Love Coach, and then click the link in my bio and there you will find the registration form. I can't wait to see you inside. So what is it that happens when a guy sends you mixed signals? Well, you could be dating him for, let's say, three months and you're maybe exclusive, but you're still in the process of getting to know each other. And then all of a sudden he starts to pull away and be less and less present in your life, although he is still there. And maybe he doesn't say anything, but his actions show you that he's not all in. Or maybe he does actually express that he might not be ready after all, but then he still keeps sending you messages and act as if you were together. Or it could be that he says he wants to stay in touch as friends, but then the messages are still very romantic. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it could also be after a breakup where he keeps writing you and calling you sweet names and telling you that he's thinking of you. But he doesn't take initiative to meet and there's no sign that he wants to get back together. So you go back and forth between thinking on the one side that it's probably never going to happen or it's probably over, depending on the scenario. And then on the other side, getting your hopes up. Because maybe he is actually interested. Maybe he just can't figure out his feelings himself. And he doesn't have a clue about how to communicate about them. Or maybe he subconsciously wants it, but he still hasn't realized that himself. At least it means something and he isn't completely out of your life. That is what you cling on to. But this is only to fall right down in a low again when a week goes by and you hear nothing. And maybe he didn't answer your last message. And again, anxiety and heartbreak starts all over. So you are literally on an emotional roller coaster, and it's like a vicious cycle you are trapped in. Because how do you let go of someone when they keep sending you little snacks, small signs that they're still thinking of you, but they're not actually taking initiative to anything? And then what is it that most of us normally do that is completely human, but only makes the suffering worse? First of all, what happens without us even noticing it is that we are all in his head, trying to figure out what's going on over there. And not only what does it mean that he writes you or doesn't write you, and when he writes you, and what he writes you, and when he opens your messages, and so on and so on. But also, and this is maybe even more important, if you're anything like me, you will in this scenario spend a lot of mental energy on trying to figure out how you can make him do or say one or the other thing. Let's be honest, in this particular situation, we do want to manipulate a bit. We do want that. We want to make him wake up and start giving us the attention that he did in the beginning. We want to figure out a strategy that can make him want to reach out and see us again or come back. But the thing is, We cannot control another human being. I'm sorry to bring it to you. We just can't. And being constantly focused on trying to do this, having so much energetic investment in something that's just not possible, that feels so disempowering. It's like trying to read someone else's mind and then implant a thought in them and think that this is a great way to spend our energy. But it's not. So... That is the first thing we do that makes it all worse for ourselves. We are in his head and trying to make him think a certain way. 
The second thing we do is bit by bit completely lose perspective. When in the beginning we are used to getting real in-person attention from someone and then they pull back and become less communicating, we kind of get used to just having text messages. And then the next step is we don't get an answer to all our text messages. And then all of a sudden we start feeling really grateful for just receiving one response once in a while. It is a gradual process and the less you receive, the more you start to believe that the crumbs he is offering you are really amazing. And maybe you remind yourself of the fact that he has all these emotional issues going on and troubles at work and going through difficult times and so on and so on. And already the fact that he is reading your messages is a good sign. Now, if you are thinking like that, this has got to stop. This is so, so far from what you want and what you deserve. You've gotten used to crumbs, but you cannot live on that. It is not what you came for to begin with. And it's not how a grown-up, loving and healthy relationship should look like. Not even in the beginning. And so the final thing we do in this situation is we hyper-focus on one person. We forget that there are so many other men out there. We act as if our whole life depended on this one and only person. And he is all the way up there on the pedestal, where we cannot reach him. All this has got to stop. So are you ready for the three shifts I suggest you to make to really take back the power to yourself again? Then here we go. Number one, you have to get out of his head. You just have to. As long as you are there, nobody is in your head. Take back the focus to yourself and instead of trying to read his mind and control things that you cannot control, come back to what you can control, which is yourself. There is no way you can know what's going on with him and you most certainly cannot make him do anything that he doesn't want to do by himself. So do a reality check. Look at what he's actually doing and saying. Not what he did or said in the beginning or on a good day. Not what you would have wanted him to do or say in the future. And also don't try to figure out why and if he really means something else than what he's saying. Just focus on the reality of the situation. And then ask yourself, not how can I make him do or say something, but just given that this is what he does and says, how do I want to respond? How do I want to show up? What do I want to show myself that I deserve and desire? And number two is, focus on what is present here and now in your life and choose to channel all your attention into that. Put your precious time and energy into cultivating friendships, passions, things that light you up. Practice becoming really present with what is already in your life and notice all the people and things you appreciate. Go for a run or a walk, read a book you've been wanting to read for a while, listen to a podcast. Have coffee with a friend you haven't seen for a while and organize something fun with other people. And you do not only want to spend time on that, you also want to redirect your brain every time it starts to obsess about him and what he might be doing right now. Because your brain might protest over having to completely let go of wondering what he's doing. So to help yourself stop obsessing over him, give yourself, let's say, three weeks where you want to go all in on what is present in your life right now and makes you feel good. And you can make a pact with yourself to do that without reaching out, without speculating about how you can make him want to see you. So this is a way to trick your brain by saying that it's only for three weeks. But then, when the three weeks are over, if you did all the things, including the next step that I'm going to give you in a moment, You will not have the same urge to have contact with a man who doesn't naturally come towards you on a consistent basis. You're just not going to be that interested anymore. And you have retrained your subconscious to feel deserving of more. So let's get to the third shift, which is, by the way, also something you can use when you want to stop feeling attracted to a man. Now, I know this is maybe going to be a little bit weird and like, how can I even do that? But just hear me out and give it a try. You want to try to let yourself get completely turned off by this lack of masculine energy coming towards you. This lack of initiative, lack of action, hesitation, doubt, walking around in small circles, not moving forward, indecisiveness. This is all very unmasculine. It's a total turn off. 
This man is also not very adventurous. He's actually a bit boring. You are bored with him. Can you see how unattractive it is to not be able to step up and make a decision? To not be able to come towards you with some real masculine energy? This will also help you take him down from that pedestal. Don't get upset and feel that it's your fault or you're less worthy or lovable. Just see this as a lack of masculine energy coming towards you. And something that helps in this process is also to notice other men. Interact with them. Smile at them. Tell them a joke. You don't have to necessarily date other men if you're not ready at this stage. But just open yourself up to connecting with them. And see how some of them offer you a whole different kind of attention than what you're getting from Mr. Mixed Signals. So these were the three shifts. Let me quickly summarize. First, you want to get out of his brain and come back to yourself. Stop trying to control him. Take back control to yourself instead. And number two, put all your precious energy back into your present life. Do what lights you up and channel your energy into the people that are already there and want to stay in your life. And number three, let yourself feel turned off by the lack of decisiveness, initiative and masculine energy from Mr. Mixed Signals and open your mind to other men. So this was all for today and I hope it was useful. I would love to hear from you if you try this out and you can reach me on Instagram at Lærke the Love Coach and Lærke is L-A-E-R-K-E. And if you want to hear more about how I can support you in your dating journey, you can book a free call in the link in the show notes or on my website LærkeTheLoveCoach.com. Take care of yourself out there and have a beautiful week. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it. 